Okay, Ben, true or false? Women's body care products are always much fancier and nicer than men's. Oh, that is false. Wait, what? Sorry, Mooch. It's just not true anymore because men have the body care brand Jack Black. And this episode of Hildy the Barback is sponsored by Jack Black, the grooming brand, not the actor. Jack Black offers a complete line of men's grooming products from face cleansers to moisturizers to beard care. Whether you've got a hardcore skincare routine or are just starting out, Jack Black makes it easy to look good, feel good, and stay fresh. Oh, is that why you've been smelling like cardamom and cedarwood? Yes, yes it is. That's just my Black Reserve body and hair cleanser. Ooh, Black Reserve. Who's this fancy guy I'm married to? I'm very fancy. This holiday season, if you want simple, effective products that your significant other will love, you need Jack Black. Head to getjackblack.com backslash Hildy and use code Hildy for 10% off your order. Once again, that's getjackblack.com backslash Hildy for 10% off and make sure you use our promo code Hildy so they know we sent you. You know, my wife, Melissa McCarthy, and I, who oh, I'm married to, wow. are big whiskey fans. Uh, all of that's true, but I would go even so far as to say that we are whiskey super fans. Yes, of course. I shouldn't have said just fans. It's <laughs> super fans. In fact, if whiskey were a sports team, we would be the couple with, you know, those painted faces and matching costumes oh. screaming at a, at a field or a television. I, I, I just, I do love a matching costume, mm. uh, always. You love costumes more than any human on this earth Thank mo- you. loves anything. Thank you. Well... I mean, I I like our kids, too, so. But in the big, wide whiskey world, there's one that stands out to us, and that's Big Nose Kate. That's because Big Nose Kate isn't just ordinary whiskey. No. No, it takes its name from a real-life outlaw who was Doc Holliday's partner in crime and partner in love. Oh, wow. Kate was also a legendary character in the history of the Old West. She was fierce, daring, and always up for an adventure. And her spirit lives in the bold yet smooth blend of rye and single malt. Ooh, makes me thirsty. Big Nose Kate <laughs> is so delicious that Melissa and I became investors. It's true. Ready for your next adventure? Head over to BigNoseKateWhiskey.com, enter promo code HILDY, and get 20% off your first order. And don't forget to follow Kate on Instagram at Big Nose Kate Whiskey to stay in touch with her wild side. Big Nose Kate Western Whiskey. Deal me in. And also deal me in. <laughs> Lemonada. This is Glenn Close. The Golgoroth Alliance is proud to present Hildy the Barback and the Lake of Fire. This presentation is brought to you by Theater of the Mind. Oh, wow. Theater of the Mind. Theater, theater, theater of the Mind. Chapter 3. The End of the Beginning. You should have already listened to chapters one and two. If so, you may never recover from the chills and thrills that you've received from those sacred sacraments. Whilst those chapters will live on in the annals of history, they were also complete frog shit when compared to the portion of the tale upon which you are about to feast. My name is Hildy. I am a barback. And a medieval pub with peasants galore and piss on the floor. But I long for something more. We are in peril from the evil one who sold desires to turn my shire into a lake of fire. The men folks say they'll protect me, but they would fuck up a cup of coffee. It's got to be me. In the dark and foreboding land of Shah Adu, Ulgrol is in his dark council chambers with Drif, his cunning, evil, and most loyal servant. Now, I have the first of the five relics of the Dread Ages that I will assemble in my most evil crusade. <laughs> you know what you, over there, 
with a sly smile on your face. You've done your job of thievery, wicked elf. You may go now. Very well, my liege. Before I take my leave, I was told that by stealing the gauntlet of might for you, I would receive a treasure that no elf would ever dare imagine. <laughs> ah! Yes. And as I squish your pretty head with a gauntlet of might, you will know a fate that no other elf will. Because your chosen elf will now know the sweet pain of death! And elf brains all over the floor. Don't worry about the cleanup. I'll take care of it. Sire, may I just say that especially when covered in magical blood, the gauntlet of might looks amazing on you. Are you sure you're not just saying that? It doesn't make my mighty fist look a little doughy. What? No. No, not at all. Very becoming and slimming as well. Thank you. I mean, obviously you're still strong. You just crushed an elf's skull like a porcelain vase. I've been wondering why you've been looking so trim lately, because you are looking tight. I see what you're doing, Trith. What? You're just buttering me up, and I say, ENOUGH! <laughs> yes. I, I know you're filled with rage, most mighty one, but if you choke me much longer, I shall die and shall lose your most trusted advisor. Blah! <sighs> <sighs> Thank you for sparing me, almighty one. <clears throat> Next time, could you please give me a heads up before choking me almost to my doom? I mean, I'm, I'm not mad about it. I'm just, you know, it's actually kind of titillating. Just would like a heads up. Okay, I get that. Now that I have the sword of fire and the gauntlet of might, I feel my powers surging. I will turn all of Golgoroth into a lake of fire! Ah, uh, yeah. Um, about that. What? I could tell you weren't into it. Why would you interrupt my battle cry like okay, no, that? No, 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 hold on. It was a very masculine and very scary battle cry for certain. At the risk slash titillation of getting choked again, I have to tell you that I'm not sure about setting all of Golgoroth ablaze. You had better mind your words, Trifle. Mighty Lord, I'm your advisor, so I'm advising. Well, stop it. No, I can't stop Look, it. Look, watch. Stopping is easy to do. You just stop. I'm here, I am. I'm walking along. Look at me. I'm walking. I'm in town. I'm going to buy a lollipop. But I just... Get it? I stopped. No, yeah, you stopped. You're not going to go get the lollipop. I got exactly. It. You have to just listen to me for one second. No! Yes! Ah! Hiss! No, I said ah! Ah! No, And I said hiss! Ah! So we're going there? Yes, we're going there. Wow. Let me put it to you this way. If you set all of Golgoroth ablaze, that includes Elias' bakery, right? Uh, yes. What What did you just say, though? Elias' bakery. It's just Elias' bakery, and no. it will burn. What? what? No. The man is Elias. Right. He owns a bakery. So you have to say, Elias' bakery, like apostrophe S. You, uh, apostrophe S is just Elias' bakery. Bakery. Okay, no, uh, agree to disagree. Uh, agree okay, to let's disagree. Let's not do grammar talk, okay? okay. Uh, I'm a man who hisses, so S's are different for okay. me. Okay, well, I'm just saying Elias. I'm going to say Elias, this is bakery. And when you hear it, you know it is the bakery of Elias. Okay, the bakery of Elias will burn in a lake of fire. Then, where are we going to get your fresh baked croissants, my most evil overlord? And your weakened bagels? Oh, and the crullers I love is crullers. Like a thick, delicious sock mm-hmm. dipped in honey and cream. He makes them Wednesdays. For all of these reasons, Elias's bakery has to be in the safe zone. No flames. And now that I think of it, we'll have to leave a non-on-fire path from the bakery to the castle. Unless we want to send a raven or a dragon over to pick up the bagels and other goodies. Birds are so dirty, I don't want feathers in my baked goods. And a hard pass on a dragon. Yeah. So, a pathway it must be. Now, there are many more considerations that must be made made or dreadfully egregious I one. don't like the sound of this at all. You have to embrace the challenges. I want the flames! I will kill everyone. Sire, of course you will. You'll slay everyone and I'll be there cackling and licking the wounds of the recently deceased just like always. But for now, take a look at this map of Golgoroth and see what kind of solutions we can glean from its parchment. Drith, I want the lake of fire to cover this entire area. And it's just not. I want the whole place. It must burn with flame.
Of course, right. All right, great. Let me just make a note of that. All right, over here is to burn. Ooh, yes. Here is no burn. And you know what? I'm going to color code this whole thing. I'm going to make it very organized. You know, I'm going to do my thing, and you're just going to look at it, and we'll, it'll be all very clear. Yeah, do what you do. I just, I have to tell you, Trith, I look at your map, and I appreciate the work that you put into it. Oh, my God. But I feel like almost nothing is on fire. Sire, I'm not trying to disappoint you. I'm not saying you're trying to do anything. I'm just disappointed. Your feelings are your feelings, oh most evil one. But look over here. There's a swath of flames over here, right? We're going to eliminate the plains of Gargul, huh? Leaving nothing alive? Nothing alive. That's pretty good, I guess. You guess. Look over here. Say goodbye to Mervale and the kingdom of Thymdal, huh? That's a big old lake of fire. Yes. Flames. And over here, more flames. Now we're cooking. Oh my gosh. Cooking like flames. <laughs> yes, Drith, you always know what to say. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's, we're just two guys laughing. <laughs> I'm having a good time. I am too. As Drith and Urgo continue screaming about flames, far away, across the vast plains of Gargul, King Thymon and King Fryman are saying farewell to our heroes. Farewell, wonderful heroes. Hildy. We'd like to give each member of your party a gift. Perta, oh, sweet Perta, this is for you. It's the Amulet of Light, forged in the eldest light by our greatest craft elf, Lightnesia, Fairlight, the light maker who brings light. It's beautiful. How does one make it light up? It doesn't light up. You really made it sound like a light. Well, it's not a light. Whosoever wears this amulet will have fresh air when none is available. The ability to breathe underwater or find fresh air on the highest mountain peak could avail you well on your journey. I can't help but see that you look disappointed that it's not a light. No. Good. For you, we have this. My hammer. It is so shiny now. Yes. It was very dirty and covered with the blood of the fallen, so we cleaned it. Also, our finest smiths reweighted it. It shall swing more smoothly now and land on your enemy's foreheads with even more devastating power. It is perfect, my weird elf friends. I will destroy my foes mercilessly with it. Oh, good. And Mirabelle, this gift is for you. It's a potion. When you open its lid, your greatest power will be revealed. But you must wait for the proper time to unlock who you truly are. Firstly, thank you. And secondly, when will that time be, my lord? Honestly, you know we can't answer that. It's the exact question that we cannot answer. Ah, okay, well, thank you. Anyway, for this intensely vague and quite arbitrary gift, I look forward to having no idea of what the moment is that I shall probably miss, as well as continuing to not understand fully who I truly am. Much appreciated. Large Armoured God. We're calling him L.A.G. for short, hoping it will catch on, but lag, protect them well, and also... Please start speaking. It's creepy when you refuse to speak. I was always told that if I speak less, my words will have greater impact. Well, I haven't heard you speak in a month, and what you just said had absolutely no impact at all. I've already forgotten it. Understood. And somehow that was even less interesting than the thing you said before. Ben, can you think of any whiskeys that are named after guys? Oh, okay, a trivia question. You know, I like trivia. Let's see. There's Jack, Jim. Mm -hmm. There's a Johnny. Exactly. Now, can you think oh, of it? Oh, uh, there are. Oh, I'm sorry. There's also two different Georges. Um, somebody else is. Wow. There. You're really running with this assignment here. Oh, I, I, uh, Evan and Elijah. And how much time do I have left? How did I'm I do? not actually timing you, but you did great. Now, do you know any whiskeys that have women's names? Uh, no. I mean, I didn't think any had a woman's name, but, oh, oh, well, of course, you and I found Big Nose Kate. And correct me if I'm wrong, it's a really great whiskey. You're not wrong. It's amazing. It's a favorite in our house. And it's such a favorite that Big Nose Kate is not only the whiskey we drink and that we love, but we've also become investors. Big Nose Kate is an uncommonly delicious Western whiskey whose namesake was a real outlaw on the old frontier. She was known as Doc Holliday's better half, but she was a lot more than that. Kate was a fighter, a successful gambler, and a businesswoman. She was one of those amazing characters that didn't make it into the history books and had all been forgotten until now. I think that's one of the things we like so much about Big Nose Kate. It's a great whiskey, but it's also a tribute to the Old West. Absolutely. And Kate's spirit lives on in this original blend of rye and single malt. 
We've tried a lot of whiskeys, but there's something different about Big Nose Kate. It's not just delicious, but I like that there's a story behind it. It really is the perfect whiskey for someone ready to try something new. So move over, Jim, Jack, and Johnny. Make some room on the shelf for a lady, will you? Oh, you forgot the two Georges and I Evan. I really and didn't. Like, there's hmm. just too many dudes. Ready for your next adventure? Head over to BigNoseKateWhiskey.com. Enter the promo code HILDY and get 20% off your first order. And don't forget to follow Kate on Instagram at BigNoseKateWhiskey to stay in touch with her wild side. Big Nose Kate Western Whiskey. Deal me in. I have to say, making a show like Hildy the Barback and the Lake of Fire is a lot of fun. I mean, I get to work with my husband, my friends, even my two girls, and we're all trying to make each other laugh, which is the best. I mean, that's not a bad day at the office, but it's also a lot of work. And at the end of a day, when I want to unwind a little bit, I like another kind of fun, mobile games, and in particular, lovetoplay.com. Lovetoplay.com is like having the biggest casino in the world strangely fit right into your phone. There's a huge selection of games, and the best part, you don't have to play alone. You can jump in with other players or challenge your friends. Sometimes a little competition is the best way to relax. And every time you play, there are exclusive bonuses and rewards waiting for you. So tonight, while you're unwinding, take a look at www.lovetoplay.com. Listeners of our show can get your first 50 spins for free using the promo code HILDY. That's love, L-O-V-E, the number two, P-L-A-Y dot com. Find excitement in every day with love to play. I have a lot of amazing women in my life. My mom, my sister, both my kids, half the cast of Hildy the Barbacker women. And I think most of us would agree that being a woman is pretty fantastic. But getting older as a woman can be a little tricky. Of course, there's the aches and creaks that weren't there in our 20s, and it can take a second to get going in the morning. And then there's the things we don't talk about enough, perimenopause and menopause. That's why I like having a company like Happy Mammoth sponsor our show. They are committed to helping women with the insomnia, the hot flashes, and all the other symptoms brought on by perimenopause and menopause. That's why I'm excited to try their best-selling Hormone Harmony Supplement, which is packed with adaptogens and herbs that support a mature woman's hormone balance. With more than 17,000 reviews singing its praises, Hormone Harmony is helping women everywhere get the support they need. For a limited time, you can get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use the code HILDY at checkout. Otto, the half centaur. Travel well, and please give the centaurs our kindest regards. And thank you for making such thunderous love to us last night, Otto. Yes, centaur fucking is the best. <laughs> Absolutely. I had a ball. Wait a minute, you engaged in sexual congress with, with a half-tar? No offense, but I don't. he doesn't even look like a centaur. He looks completely human to me. I mean, except for the hooves or to, what do you call them? Tooves. Tooves. Well, whatever you look like, you're a wonderful lover, Otto. As are you, my kings. Erna, come on, you also enjoyed coupling with the beautiful kings? Sorry, Hildy, I got the offer and- You know what, no offense, this is absolute bullshit. Yeah, I'm looking right at all of you. Well, one person's bullshit is another person having standards. This gift is for you, Hildy. Oh, okay, well, okay, thank you. Oh, such a beautiful small decanter. What's inside, great lords? It is a leave-in conditioner that can really help hair look less dry and scraggly. Oh, you've got to be fucking kidding me. No, no, not even verbally would I fuck you. And here's a mint. Oh, Heather. If you make passage through the land of centaurs, the helm of magic that you seek lies with the wizards in their island stronghold on the Isle of Magus in the Golgorathian Sea. If you make it past those dangers, which feels unlikely. Completely impossible. But if you do make it, then you must get the boots of destiny from the giants in their high mountain land of Cormoran. Which feels impossible. Absolutely. It should never happen. You have five days to do this. We are assembling our elven armies and allies and will challenge Urgral at his very doorstep. Remember, if you fail to retrieve the Helm of Magic and Boots of Destiny, and Urgral gets them instead, then our entire army shall lie helpless at the feet of Urgral, and all of Golgorath shall perish in a lake of fire. Mighty kings, is is there not even a, a speck of hope? Well, a speck, yes, but this quest shall probably crash and burn, leaving all of us on our knees, begging for death. <laughs> we might also be begging for death if you don't take that mint. 
Farewell, farewell, farewell. Fuck me. No, never, never. Wait, wait, do I get anything? Do I have to find it for myself? Is that the, is this part of the game of it? Oh, is it a magical apple? Why would it be a magical apple? Quests need magical apples. Everyone that's knows not that. A, that's not a thing. Hey, elves are weird. Don't let this get you all beefed up. Thanks, Gerd. And for your very kind words, I'd be happy to carry your equipment in my enchanted bag of holding. Your, your what? My enchanted bag. Where in the seven realms did you get a bag of holdings, much less an enchanted one? Uh, Okay, just say it, okay? Say it with your dumb pumpkin face. Just before he died, Dad Ah. gave it to me and told me not to tell you, specifically because magic relics make females faint with melancholy and hysteria. My God, I... Never faint. I have never fainted. You faint all the fucking time. No. I... Like I walk into a room too quickly. You're out. Something falls off a shelf. A pillow tips over gently. You go out like you got a switch on your back. I'm going to tell you exactly when I faint, okay? I only faint when I get up too quickly or if I sit down fast. Or sometimes when I have to run, yes, the pillow thing. Yes, when you come in a room, but you come in too fast. You know what? Okay, everybody just give your stuff to my muttonhead brother. We'll, we will travel faster without the extra weight. With that, our heroes begin the march west towards the mighty river Glithkin and the plains of Gargle, the land where the centaurs reign. Hildy, taking the lead, is joined by the large armored guard, or lag. Oh, oh, ho oh there, uh, large armored guard, now that I know you can actually speak. Um, how did you become the chief guard of the elven army? I was a fearful child. So my mother and father taught me how to fight, to face my fears. You see, I was deathly afraid of water because I saw my uncle drown after a bloody battle with a werebear. Oh. So... I became perhaps the fiercest fighter in all of Thymdall to overcome my fears. Wow, okay. Uh, Did your parents ever think about teaching you how to swim? No, we never got around to that. Oh, well that just seems like quite an oversight, you know, my large, large friend. Please, everyone calls me Large Armored Guard. You and all of you here, my new friends, Please call me by my name. I want you all to know me. To know my name. The large armored guard gathers the company and tells the traveler his name. Then, with the day's light fading, our heroes decide to make camp next to the roaring waters of the river Glithkin. As the travelers slumber, Perda is given the first watch. Who there? Who approaches? An arrow! Centaurs! Wake up, everyone! Wake up! We're under attack! Hilton, wake up! Uh, I'm awake! Gerd, arise! Grasp your mighty warhammer! I cannot! My family has a strict set of rules. Number one, do not piss on a dryad. Number two was never murder a horse. I also can do no magic against beasts of this ilk. Their magic is too old and it's bad luck for a sorceress. Are you really could have let me know that information before we came to the land of the centaurs. Grab your things, everyone. We must flee to the bridge. I know you care for the safety of your sister, but Fennec, stop pushing me from behind. Come on. I don't want to get hit by an arrow. Oh, my God, and I do? God, oh, you are a remarkable coward, big brother. Oh, you there. Face me in battle. I, we have no issue with you, Centaur. Leave us be. I'll answer simply. Nay! This will be the bridge of your death. Prepare to have your eye sockets crushed by my mighty hooves. Wow, that is specific. Oh, I hope your hooves like the taste of my blade. <laughs> my hooves. My precious hooves. More centaurs join the fray, and our heroes are hopelessly outnumbered. We are hopelessly outnumbered! Keep moving! I shall stand and fight! Do not test me, centaurs! One dead centaur! Two dead centaurs! Your hooves!
The large armored guard has been pushed off of the bridge. Just stand up, lag! Okay, that can't be more than three feet of water. Just even sit up. God, help me, I'm drowning! Large armored guard, I'm throwing you down the amulet. It will help you breathe in the water. He's not gonna catch it. I did not catch it! I don't know how to catch! Where did you throw the amulet? I knew those elves should have made it light up. Just stand up, man! He's been under for a long time. I've got water in my ears! Oh, my God. Oh, he's dead. I felt his spirit leave this realm. He died fighting for the cause of goodness. Farewell, uh, good sir. You cannot remember his name either, can you? Was it Lawrence? Lawrence? No. He told us I remember because he gathered us all in a circle. We all held hands and he said five times, My name is... And then he said, uh, he said a name. Whoa, whoa, hey, centaurs! <laughs> we surrender! We surrender! I offer you the lives of all of my compatriots if you grant me my freedom. Oh, no. What the fuck? You are a turd, Fennec. What? You are absolute garbage. You've always been garbage, mate. You're a garbage human being. You are dung, non-friend. I'm talking about fecal dung from your back door bottom hole. Sorry. I don't know about you, but a chic quality sweater that I can just throw on to do errands kind of makes me feel like I've got my life together. And I've taken Quince's $50 100% Mongolian cashmere sweater out to lunch, to pick up the kids, on a couple of Zooms. It's really become my go-to kind of sweater. I know what you're thinking, Melissa, $50 for cashmere, are you bananas? No, I'm not, because Quince works directly with the best factories and skips the middleman. So you're getting premium quality without the premium price tag. And it's all 50 to 80% less than similar brands. They sent me and Ben some absolutely beautiful sweaters in moss green so we can match. I think he looks great. He tells me I look great. We make our kids tell us how great we look together because that's... Just good parenting. Get cozy in Quince's high quality wardrobe essentials. Go to quince.com slash Hildy for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash Hildy to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash Hildy. Hi, I'm Emily Deschanel. And I'm Carla Gallo, and we're excited to tell you about Boneheads, <laughs> our new Bones rewatch podcast. I played Dr. Temperance Brennan. And I played Daisy Wick, and we are going to watch from the very beginning. We're going to watch the episodes. We're going to reminisce. We're going to laugh. We're going to cry. We're going to tell behind-the-scenes stories. We're going to go on tangents. A lot of tangents. So whether you're a seasoned Bones fanatic or a newcomer looking to dip your toes in to the wild world of forensic anthropology, this show is for you. Boneheads from Lemonada Media is out now wherever you get your podcasts. Surrender. Our heroes must. The centaurs refuse Finnick's despicably cowardly offer, and our heroes are made captive and brought to the fire pit of destiny. There, they will have their fate decided by Canessa and Bronwyn, the queen and king of the centaurs. Enough! Enough! You now stand beside the fire pit of destiny. I sense no magic in the fire pit. We didn't want to just call it a fire pit, Weisenheimer! There's nothing wrong with giving a normal thing some pizzazz. That's exactly right, Knessa. You now have audience with Queen Knessa and I, Duke Bronwyn, Duke and Queen of the Centaurs, under the Centaurs. You see us galloping up. Believe your eyes The faces of angels With powerful thighs And you hear our hooves Thundering the earth You never knew Angels had so much girth The best of the world A boy and a girl And half of a horse A real tour de force Then you see us prancing And you start to Baby, 
feeling randy My staunch haunches can launch the raunch And set off a real boner parade The music's banging Our loins are hanging Down to the ground Down to the ground You came here to fight But you're dancing all night Around, down, around Around, down, around Torsos ripple in the shimmery sun We're centaurs, baby And we've only begun Sometimes we kill But tonight we You foolish humans are so lucky to be in our presence. Drink us in. Like delicious wine, which you could never hope to afford. <laughs> I'll, I'll just have the water. <laughs> Can you imagine? Is it free? <laughs> uh, silence! Before we decide your fates, dirty travelers, you must answer a query for us. And do not lie to us, for I, Duke Bronwyn, can smell the rot of untruth which oozes from the human gab. My mouth might be difficult to decipher. I just ate a rancid sandwich. Well, that's gross! But it doesn't matter, because I, Queen Canessa, can also see the unseen thoughts which you believe you can hide from me with... Your mind. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if that was a laughing moment. If you can indeed do that, mighty queen, then does it matter what we say at all? It would stand to reason that if you can see inside our minds that we might as well not talk at all. Silence! It doesn't work exactly that way. It works a different way. Here is the question, and yes, you must answer. Do you think it is difficult for us to so easily embody both physical and spiritual perfection? Uh, if I may, mighty centaurs, we, we are getting off track. We are on a deadly quest. There is an evil growing across our land, and we have no time to waste. We beg you for safe passage. Boring! Feel my gaze. Look at my intelligence. You, you can't look at intelligence. <laughs> Maybe you're just not cunning enough to see her mighty intelligence. Silence! How dare you say that? Only a mighty centaur can yell silence in a mighty centaur home. I can say silence because I am a centaur, so silence! Sorry, by the way, I, I, I didn't want to have to do that. How can you be a centaur? You look to be an abnormally beautiful human man wearing no shirt. There is no horse in you, no horse at all. How dare you? I am going to remove my very large boots so you can see. Uh, buckle for yourselves. <gasps> Nay! I am Otto Equestus of Clan Equestus, defenders of the rutted glade and first among the silver stable. God. Your feet are exquisite. Each horse foot possesses ten toes surrounding a beautiful hoof. You truly are a fabled half-tor Otto Equestus, the most legendary centaur of us all. I thought they only existed in legend. As is my birthright, I demand safe passage for my friends and I across the plains of Gargol. Wonderful! Wonderful! It seems we must now have a change of plans, Bronwyn, my husband, and most noble duke. Wait, I thought you were brother and sister. Yes, we are. We are also married. Uh, wow. But lo, indeed, the stars themselves told us to capture this group, and the stars themselves led us to this glorious auto equestus of myth and legend. And the stars are now telling me that we must let you go on your own path. No! I'd love to at least trample that one over there with my mighty hooves. Oh, God, it's gonna be you, Fennec. What? Yeah, I, th I just think it's the way you carry yourself. That one, the dull-looking fellow. It's like his face is a magnet for my hooves. God, duh, why is it always me? I didn't do anything! Okay, can I just, can I just, please, please don't kill my brother, okay? As much as sometimes I'd love to, but please look to the stars again. I'm sure the stars are saying, uh, you know, don't, don't do that. Actually, 
The stars are moving in confusing fashion right now. Indeed they are, Gertie. I've never seen anything like it. Hey God! What are we seeing in the night sky? It's beautiful, but quite frenetic. What can it mean? It is a sign. Ugral is in motion, and your plan has almost already failed. How is that possible? Unbeknownst to you, Ugral has already sent out envoys to the land of the giants and to the wizard of Almagus. You'll never make it to both places in time. Hope is lost. All of Goldorth will soon be bathed in flames. Death is coming! Or we could just split up. Half of our party could go to the land of the giants and the other half could go to Wizard's Island. All right, that could work too. It's got to be me. I'm a all free. It's my destiny. Why, hello there. This is your pal Sarah Silverman. You know, the stand-up comic that's not afraid of a diarrhea joke. Oh, my God, I'm so brave. I hope you're enjoying this podcast that you're listening to. I am just dropping in here to let you know about another podcast I think you'd like, and it's called the Sarah Silverman Podcast. Each week, listeners from all over the world call in, and they ask me for advice, or they talk about something going on in their life, anything, their silliest, grossest, deepest, darkest situations, and then I respond, whether I'm qualified to or not. Go ahead, search for the Sarah Silverman Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Bye. Hi, I'm Leisha Haley. And I'm Kate Manig. 20 years ago, we met playing best friends on the set of the TV show, The L Word, which quickly morphed into us being actual best friends for the rest of our lives. Truly, it feels like we're an old married couple, with, but with fewer cats, although we each have a number of cats in our lives. And we're pretty much inseparable and have more or less zero boundaries. Hence why we named our podcast Pants, because at this point, you can't have one leg without the other. And each week we catch up with each other on the big and small things going on in our lives, which then leads to much oversharing and little left to the imagination, whether it's sex or therapy or money fears. Literally nothing is off the table in terms of discussion topics. Oh, and we also like to talk about that wild ride that was the L word. You know, the genesis of our friendship. And Pants is out now, wherever you get your podcasts from Lemonada Media.